That's all he said. He didn't say you had to be good. He didn't say you, you had to be obedient. He simply said, you go in your house, you put the blood on your doorpost, you eat the lamb, and the death angel will pass over you. How much more has the blood of Christ cleansed our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? The house we know in the Old Testament, the temple in the Old Testament represents God's true house, His true temple, which is you and me. Know ye not, Paul told the Corinthians, that you are the temple of God? Don't you know that? Of course we know that. But, but why are we not living like that? Oh, of course we love God. We go to church and we worship God. It's a wonderful. We love God. But yet we look at ourselves and, and we see our shortcomings and, and we see some areas in our lives that's not pleasing to God. And then rather, rather than believe the truth of what the scriptures tell us, we fall into this guilt of not being as good as we know we should be. You are in the house. This is the house of God. And the blood of Jesus was applied to his house. And, the, and again, in the Old Testament, their requirement was only to be in the house. I'm sure the people that gathered into the houses in the Old Testament, I'm sure they had a lot of problems. We can see that when they went out into the wilderness. I'm sure there was a lot of sinners in that house. But the only requirement was, be in the house. If you're in your house and you're eating the lamb, the death angel will pass over you. And today we're beginning to realize that no matter what our problems are, no matter how many hang-ups we have, no matter how many sins we have not yet been able to overcome in our lives, if we realize that we are the temple of God, the blood of Jesus has been shed for our sins, and all we need to do is eat the lamb. The only way that you or I will ever come out of all of our bad habits or sins or anything that's bothering you, the only way that you will ever escape from the flesh is to learn how to eat the lamb. You've already been forgiven. I read a scripture last night here that said God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not holding them accountable for their sin. Why is that? Because the blood has been shed. You were forgiven for everything you've ever done, even before you were born, because of Jesus. So your problem, we've always thought that our problem was sin. And really sin is not the problem because sin was dealt with at Calvary. Jesus took away the sin of the world. The problem for us is not the sin in our lives. The problem for us is knowing how to overcome, how to get out of it. And the only way that you come out of the sin and the guilt and the failure is to eat the lamb. And you say, how do I eat the lamb? Jesus said in John chapter 6, As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, even so whoever eats me will live by me. 
You see, even in this natural world, you become what you eat. What you eat will determine many times the condition of your health. What you eat becomes a part of you. So what we need to do is learn how to assimilate, how to eat Jesus. Paul told the Corinthians, whenever your heart is turned to the Lord, the veil is taken away. The veil is your humanity. The veil is your carnality. But whenever your heart, as it did this morning in worship, whenever your heart turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. And then we beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we too are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. So we need to go back to our Bibles and not read them like a storybook, but realize the scriptures really are a picture of our journey from the Garden of Eden to the city of God in the book of Revelation. Everything in the scriptures is a map revealing to you your journey from flesh to spirit. To give you an example, Isaac and Ishmael. Isaac represents your spiritual man. You have been regenerated. In your spirit, you are the Isaac. But in your flesh, you are the Esau. Because your flesh will try to manipulate God. Your flesh will try to, to do everything to get God's favor. But your spirit knows, being an Isaac, that everything that God has comes to you by inheritance. And if you remember one day God went to, or Abraham went to God and said, God, I want you to bless Esau. And God said, I'll bless Esau. In other words, what Abraham was saying, I want you to bless my works of the flesh because Esau was a work of the flesh. And God says, I'll bless Esau. But my promise is to Isaac. So if you're a Christian operating from the flesh realm, God will still bless you, but you will work under sweat and blood, trying to always please God, and, and you'll always feel like defeat and failure when you miss God. But once your eyes are unveiled to reveal that Isaac is your true nature, you are a son of God, born not by flesh, born not by the will of man, but of God. Your spirit was born of God. Peter says it this way, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the living and abiding word of God. Do you realize that you were born by the Word of God? You see, in the, in the beginning of the Gospel of John in chapter 1, it says the Word was made flesh. And we know that when Jesus came into this earth realm, we know that He was the Word made flesh. But what we haven't realized is that we too are the Word made flesh. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the living and abiding Word of God. You see, there was a day when I walked in darkness. There was a day when I was full of all the lusts of the flesh and the pride of life. But one day there was something that began to pull on the inside of me. There, there, there was a drawing by the Spirit of God. And one day as that 
word 